So I wasn't sure I was going to make this video. This video going over the complete amount of bullshit movies we've gotten released in 2024 so far. But then I saw this post on Twitter of people hating on Chris Stuckman. Chris Stuckman, if you guys don't know, somebody who's one of the most well-known just film critics on YouTube. He's made his own horror movie that will be likely coming out either this year or sometime in the future. So he took a more nuanced approach talking about movie studios instead of just shitting on Madden Web like a lot of people did. And he got hate for it. And that got me really upset and thinking about like, hey, we need to talk about how bad movies have been in 2024. I did a little review with By the Numbers, my kind of podcast breaking down more of the analytical side of movies last week. Link up here talking about how bad the Super Bowl weekend box office was. How Argyle and Madam Webb delivered what ended up being the worst box office since 1990. I'm getting kind of old. I'm 31, going to be 32 in May. That's before I was born, not by one year, but two. Movies this year have been absolute dog shit when it comes to wide releases. And I personally am putting this out as my reaction of just how annoyed I've been and who I think is to blame for a lot of this stuff. And I'm talking about the studios like Chris Beckman talked about. I'm not going to let the writers and, and directors off the hooks as well. Some of these movies that have came out this year are movies that are projects by directors and written by certain directors that have been absolute shit. They haven't had studio interference. I'm going to blame us, the audience, in some different ways and how things need to change and hopefully how this year can rebound because without a doubt 2024 is easily one of the worst starts of the year for movies and it's kind of frustrating because i see the oscars and the award movies coming up and this is one of the best crops of overall award films 1 to 10 1 to 12 but for whatever reason january 1st happened 2024 and all the studios decided that hey we're gonna dump the worst projects back to 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 start this year and let's just hope it doesn't drive people away from the theaters overall. Now, what started this year off pretty bad for me, and it's still my worst ranked movie, Night Swim. Night Swim was this bland as hell Blumhouse horror movie that basically had this haunted house pool with the biggest tropes of all tropes. I'm talking about people doing the stupidest things possible throughout the entire movie, not really having much actual family chemistry, and not really even delivering that much on scares for a basic horror movie. This movie did just fine enough to probably make its money back, as I've talked about with Blumhouse before on the channel. They know how to make money for really, really, you know, off really, really cheap movies, but Night Swim, one of the worst reviewed movies of the year by both fans and critics. Now, what came next per se? Well, for me, it was The Beekeeper. And while this is one of my more enjoyable films of the year, I cannot watch The Beekeeper and think, this is just a really bad movie that, like, I halfway through making it, they must have realized, or halfway through writing it, that, like, this is a bad movie, so let's just throw as many bee puns as we can. Let's make this as campy as we can. Let's try and make this as enjoyable for the audience to laugh and, and enjoy this like really bad action flick. And if it wasn't for some of the campiness and jokiness, this is just a plain out black, bad movie. Whether it's just the whole script and whether the things they're saying is so absurd, it's unbelievable. Again, a lot of the movie is in on that joke a bit, but I also know this movie doesn't get greenlit like this if it wasn't taken seriously at some point. You have like the stupidest type of henchman in the world. And again, a great drinking game for 2024 is when the beekeeper hits streaming or digital or whatever, watch it, you know, at home, have your whatever drinks you like to have, and every time you get a bee reference or bee pun, take a sip. You'll be hammered by the end of this movie. And again, it's one of my more enjoyable films of the year, but if you're going to see something more than that's like going to be decent and enjoyable, the beekeeper wasn't it. Next up that came was the Mean Girls musical movie, which Renee Rapp came out of this looking very good as her Regina George. She deserved that she was good in this movie. But overall, while critics kind of liked this movie a bit, audiences did not. And oh my goodness, can we talk about how studios just hide the fact that movies are musicals? And this is a clear case of 
nobody really knew in terms of the general audience that this was a musical until it came out and people did not like and respond to that in terms of the remake also coming out about the same time was ISS. I don't know how this movie got 80% Rotten Tomatoes scored by critics. Maybe they thought because it was kind of okay-ish and more people critics gave it like a 7s instead of a 6s or a 5s. It sneaked through with such a high, you know, RT score percentage. But the audience didn't like it. It really wasn't that great of a movie. Arnold DeBose's character was written so stupidly and so naively. And throughout the movie, you just have characters that are just like, oh, there's nuclear war that we see going on underneath there, and we're sharing space with the Russians. Well, they would not, and, and we got ordered to take over the spaceship, and they you know, they likely got the same order. Well, they're just going to be friends with us. They're not going to try and kill us. Even though our one person's party already, you know, tried to be killed, hey, it's okay. What are we watching what are we putting out into theaters in terms of wide releases? This has nothing to do, I think, with a studio movie, because I don't think a studio is going to look at ISS and be like, hey, can you make it this way? Can you write it like this? Something like Madame Webb we'll talk about later, where I think you can talk about studio interference. Things like the Mean Girls movie, things like ISS, even things like Beekeeper, Night Swim, that ain't no studio interference. That's just bad writing and directing in these movies. People being lazy and just putting it out and getting a green light and being okay with that. Like, it's so annoying because... We're coming off, I think, a very solid end half of 2023. You have Barbie and, and you have Oppenheimer. Wonka did very well. You've had, you know, decent movies like Godzilla Minus One kind of have their own, their own legs, per se. And we're now having this 2024 just absolute shit come out. Um, what else came out in 2024 so far? I mean, Argyle. Matthew Vaughn, again, this movie was purchased by Apple for $200 million. How they watched this movie and said that this movie is worth $200 million, I do not know. But I guarantee you, there was not much actual studio interference here. This was just Matthew Vaughn putting out a very bland, very poorly written spy movie that just never ended. And it was like, hey... I made this reference here earlier in the movie. Let's turn that into a big action scene in the end of the movie. Oh, I referred to this in the beginning of the movie. Big action scene at the end of the movie. And you're just like, oh, can you let it end? Please let it end. And it just doesn't end. It just does not. Um, Lisa Frankenstein, another movie that came out. Again, it seems to be having a little bit better audience score overall, but in terms of the actual box office, not many people went to see it. I know it was Super Bowl weekend, but Mondays and Tuesdays, you know, I mean, you know, I know it's Super Bowl weekend, but Friday and Saturday isn't the Super Bowl. It could get more than $3 million. It was not a great advertised movie. And for me, I thought it was a pretty bad movie in terms of written characters that were so over the top and annoying and in a world that was trying to take itself seriously and put some like serious messaging in there you had a really cool written character that was a stepsister that was just a nice popular person to her you know, other her new stepsister that was a little bit more of a loner and when they could have just let it be like that they had to have a third acting happen that makes that new stepsister that's really nice at peach tropes be an a-hole that becomes a part of the trope. I, again, the, the movie was just, for me, written pretty poorly, and I think that's why it has such bad critics' reviews. Audiences are kind of mixed. I mean, when a movie's in the 80-ish percent in Rotten Tomatoes, that's not the best overall when you look at a box office that's also very low. And then, oh my goodness, let's talk about this week's releases. We have Bob Marley, One World, which it seems like audiences are liking. It has that 90% rating, but I'm still wondering, like, for me personally, Bob Marley, One World was a disappointment because I was looking forward to getting a more in-depth look in what Bob Marley was like and the, the, the different type of, you know, social war, you know, justice actions that he took place, especially in Jamaica. They make a big deal on the trailer about his concert in Jamaica. 
And the movie doesn't really go into that. And you get more of the business side at one point. Like, okay, cool. I'll, I like to learn a little more of the business side. And then it kind of stops that. And it has this relationship drama side with his wife. You know, like, okay, that's interesting. I hear some things there. Maybe we can delve into that and see how it goes into both sides. And then, nope, it's over. And you just leave this, like, hour and a half movie, which, again, not a bad thing. It's hour and a half. But, like, you don't learn much of anything about Bob Marley besides that. He has some famous songs. Exodus came out, and that's kind of it. He, you know, he was a, a very much pacifist when it comes to Jamaica and just overall hatred between each other. But, like, the movie doesn't really present any of the issues. The movie doesn't really go into Barb Marley as an individual person. The movie doesn't really go that much into it in terms of the business side of stuff. It just goes and goes and goes and if you like Bob Marley music you'll hear the songs you'll like that you'll say you know but if you're looking for a better film if you're looking for a more in-depth movie understanding I think who Bob Marley is and the struggles he might have went through in life I don't think you get that with Bob Marley One World and then we have Madam Web Madam Web which is a big studio movie that got pushed out and I don't know what to say I know there's a lot of blame on the everybody involved. I think a lot of the actors don't act well. The villain, and especially, he was really poor in that. Um, Dakota Johnson and Sidney Sweeney they didn't, weren't really great in the movie overall either. The script for this movie felt like it was written by AI. And I almost feel like the writers did the script with AI prompts because their studio was like, well, we want this and this to happen. And they got annoyed that they couldn't tell their story. So they just went to chat GDP and was like, hey, write me a script for, for Madam Web where these things happen. Because that's how the dialogue feels. It doesn't feel like real people. It doesn't even feel like fake people. It just feels like words that are being said. And a part of that is due to the acting, but I'm sure when you're reading these and you're trying to act, you're like, there's nothing here to give. It, it's just a very, very badly written movie. I can't blame the director all the way through because I can see this movie got cut up by the studio, which Chris Stuckman, like I said earlier, what got me upset is he was really going into how studios can mess with projects and don't let the directors film what they want. But it feels like this movie got spliced up in different ways from the studio and it kind of got left with this big web of bullshit. It's a movie that was made not for much money, so Sony might get enough money to be like, hey, we, you know, we can continue on with this, so, you know, this promise of these characters, but I don't understand how anybody read these scripts as a studio head, as a producer, and thought, this is acceptable. This... I don't care if it would have cost them 20-ish million dollars or more to shut down production and tell the people, like, hey, you need to make a script that sounds half decent. I'm not even talking about great. Half decent. The script for this would be amazing if it could get up to, like, the beekeeper level. If it understood how stupid it was, maybe it could be put in the beekeeper world. But it didn't. It didn't understand. And I don't know how anybody reads these scripts and think it's okay and we're just been giving bad movie after bad movie after bad movie. I might even be forgetting a movie in there. I am. Miller's Girl. That movie got kind of wide released. And while I can't blame fully the acting of Jenna Ortega or Morton Freeman, the script is really, really, really bad. You're taking these high school student, two high school students trying to have affairs with teachers and... You're in at the end of it. The one teacher was even like, you know, he just needed to know where the line was, as if getting nudes and sexting with students was a line to keep. Miller's Girl was just another one, the, again, one that came out wide release that was just not good. Oh my goodness! I, and how do these movies get made? That's where my first blame goes to. It's the studios and the producers. You need to be better about what you're companies are doing what your creators are doing you need to not be afraid to step in there whenever you read these scripts and say hey give this a second draft give this a third draft let's try and fine tune this because so many of these scripts that came out this year have been utter garbage and i know because the strike happened maybe some of these movies were rushed a bit so that way there wasn't this big dead gap but i don't know 
these have been some of the worst written movies in the world. And maybe there's a world where these studios saw these scripts before the strike and was like, hey, we're not going to give in to these writers if they're going to give us bad script writing. And it's not immune to movies that just came out right now. There's a lot of movies last year that I think had really lazy script writing too. Whether it be, you know, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I think the Indiana Jones movie had pretty somewhat lazy script writing. I'm trying to think what other movies. The Super Mario Brothers movie. I know it did really, really well. But that felt like very lazy script writing. Um, there's, a, there's just a tremendous amount. Let's not talk about The Flash. Um, the, you know, any of the DC movies. So there's been a ton of movies that have came out that just have been having terrible scripts for a while. And I think because they've become box office hits in some ways, that they've now, studios have now real felt that even the mid-budget and lower budgets, we don't need to give them decent scripts. The audience will like them if they like these core concepts. Horror movie? Sure. Funny action movie? Sure. Musical? Well, we have to hide that it's a musical, but I'm sure once the people realize it's a musical, they'll be okay with it when they get into theaters if it's a remake. Like, come on, biopic? We need studios and producers and directors to read through these scripts and actually force good writing to happen. And that leads me to my second person to blame, the writers. You guys had your strike. I know some of you guys are overworked. But you cannot be writing absolute dog shit scripts consistently like this. I don't know how I can come here and try and defend you when I've just sat through this this year so far, like seven or eight movies that I can't even give big recommendations from people. I just had a call with a family member this week when I was like, well, what do I want to go see in theaters? And I was like, well, what do you have the options? And they were like, Madam Webb. No. Beekeeper. Well, if you're okay with more of like an action movie that's self-aware, but it's not like a great other movie. No. Night Swim. Somehow still in the theater, but no. Um, Argyle. No. Lisa Frankenstein. No. And they're like, Bob Barley won love. I'm like, people have seemed to enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it that much. Maybe you can go into that. And they were just like, eh. Um, they felt similar to me in that type of a way. And hearing what I had my thoughts on it. Um, so, like, there's nothing that great in the theaters right now. Which also brings back to what I would consider the studios issue. We have ten great Best Picture noms. Ten great ones. And yes, some of them, like Barbie and Oppenheimer, they had their big runs. You probably won't get people back in theaters for them. Even The Holdovers is a movie that had a decent run all through October into, you know, November and area. But American Fiction and Poor Things are two incredible movies. American Fiction especially, because I think that's a great movie that can appeal to just about anybody. They can watch it and they'd find it am amusing, uh, funny, and insightful. But for whatever reason, things like Zone of Interest, Anatomy of a Fall, um... And, you know, poor things, American fiction. There's like four or five great movies that really haven't had actual big theatrical runs here in the U.S. And yes, American fiction and poor things went a little bit wide. They went over the thousand theater count. But they weren't advertised very well. They weren't really promoted at all very well. They weren't talked about as movies people should go and see in theaters. These are great movies that we should be pushing out more. So whenever the Oscars comes, we don't have people complaining that, oh, Barbie's being snubbed for different things, you know, because it's the only big movie besides Oppenheimer the average person saw. No, we should be promoting these actually amazing films that I think a generic person can watch and enjoy and give them something good to watch at the theater. I know American Fiction was one I recommended to a few people. They went and they saw it in January and they were like, oh my goodness, thank you so much for that recommendation. I was going to go see this other movie, but since that was the best thing I've seen in months. And it shouldn't take me, somebody who knows about all these movies, to be able to advertise and be the person telling what people should go and see that's good besides the 3,000 plus theaters that are being released with the absolute dog shit I talked about earlier advertise these Oscar movies. 
get people into theaters to see them. They will enjoy them. We've seen things like Barbie Oppenheimer do well. Past lives did very well um, during the summertime. Last year, everything, everywhere, all at once did well before it won Best Picture. People are actually open to these movies if you give them proper marketing campaigns and get the people into theaters to see them and let them know that they're in theaters to see. We don't need to be seeing all the stupid filth that comes out in terms of the bad movies over and over and over again. Oh. And that leads me to my last people to blame. And that's us as audience people. This isn't a fun one to say because we should be, we are the ones that are paying. We don't, we shouldn't take the blame for the people who are producing it being bad, but how we spent our dollars over the past five to 10 years has trained the studios to act a certain way. I'm talking about the reason why studios don't put out Oscar films and give them a much bigger and broader type appeal to the math, the regular audience is because so many people, when they hear about Oscar films, they think they're baby. They think they're boring. They think they're dull. They're tr just trying too hard. And a lot of these Oscar movies are just really good movies if you've given them that chance. And because we as audience members have taken some of the more obvious versions of Oscar baby movies, I know Maestro was a big one for a lot of people. Again, Maestro, a great movie. Yes, Bradley Cooper is trying very, very hard for best actor. He's still acting incredibly as, as Leonard Bernstein. It's not a knock on the film to have people trying hard. But we as audience members are like that. Nobody was like, you know, look at look at Margot Robbie trying really hard as Barbie. That's horrible. No, we praise Margot Robbie for all the work that went into Barbie and, and Greta Gerwig and all that crew. We praise Christopher Nolan for all the hard work he put in the Oppenheimer. We need to, as audience members, start accepting some of these Oscar movies where people are trying their hardest to win awards that matter to them and not try and downplay them overall. We need to tell the studios with our monies that, hey, I will go see American fiction or a movie like American fiction in theaters over something like ISS or Night Swim or The Beekeeper. And if you enjoy some of those movies, that's fine too. But the audience scores reflect things like we don't enjoy these movies. We don't really know what we're going out to see. And we just need to actually put our money to better movies. Like Madam Web this weekend is going to probably make close to 20-ish million dollars for a movie that most people didn't like. Now, what should happen is next week Madam Web should make like 5 million dollars, you know, for the weekend and you know, and have this have a superiorly high drop. Don't go and see it and make it a meme. Don't give these studios money for these bad projects. Take that money, save it for yourself, and when if Dune 2 ends up being as good as it seems to be being, you know, is being talked about, go see Dune 2. Don't give, don't save your money to go see a bad Godzilla vs. Kong movie. I mean, if you enjoy it, I understand, but like, we don't put our money into the cinemas as much anymore, and when we choose something that is very bland, that doesn't have much writing involved, Guess what the studios do? They trickle that down into all their movie projects and we get left with a horrible batch of movies like we've had at the start of 2024. Now, next week is Drive Away Dolls. I'm hoping it looks good. I mean, the trailers have looked good. I'm hoping it's a good movie. I also get to see Dune 2 next Sunday and I'm praying to God we have our first truly amazing movie that is wide release of 2024. I know things like Zone of Interest came out Really, really great movie. Again, foreign film, people won't take a chance on that as much. I wish, again, us as an audience blame, take more chances on foreign films. You're surprised Godzilla Minus One was great? Well, Teacher's Line was great. Anatomy of a Fall was great. Zone of Interest is great. There's a lot of great foreign movies out there if you give it a chance. We saw that with Past Lives last year. Yes, it was American-made, but it was mostly between Korean and English. Give these movies bigger chances. Boy in the Hair, another one, did really great. We need to be going out and seeing good movies more. And and so the studios can see that and be like, okay, they 
let's push these out for wider releases. Let's give them an actual advertising budget that isn't just the award campaign season. Let's not go back into the tropes where we end up with Madam Webs, where we end up with Argyles, where we end up with Night Swims. We need to actually, with our money and with our voices, force studios to give us something better or we don't go. And it sucks because I love the movie theaters and I want the movie theater industry to do better because it's something that I have noticed is kind of dying out the amount of people go there. And there is really nothing as enjoyable as a... Seeing a new movie with a pack full of people, whether they're laughing, whether they're cheering and stuff. I've seen a lot of movies like The Lost City with a full theater. Having a full audience makes that experience a million times better than me continuously going into a theater that's filled with maybe 10 people. But I don't blame people this year because 2024, for all the things that have been advertised well, for all the things that we've seen, has been absolute piles of trash and it needs to stop sooner or later before movie theaters and the whole entire industry walks out because people will just watch streaming. People will just watch the stuff they like. And I'm somebody who tries to see everything and I will be sad if this happens and, and I lose things that I enjoy. And that's more me. I know that's me being selfish, but I promise you it can get better again. We can actually get good movies putting out again. I don't, again, not putting the biggest flame on the audience. They take the least amount, but like the studios, the writers, the directors, the producers, get on your shit because you cannot afford another month to two month stretch like we had in January and February of 2024. Or people will just decide, I'm not going to go see a movie. I don't trust these guys. I'll wait and see it on home after I know how everybody else thinks. But if you like this rant, if you like this video, leave a like, leave a subscription. This is like 27 minutes long, but you know, I had to get it off my chest. I just, I have never been this upset at the movies that have came out this year. And I'm not one to try and trash things. I try to give recommendations and you can see in my reviews of people who I think could like something, but so much of this year, there ain't nothing to recommend. See you next time. This took the place of why Killers of the Flower Moon should win Best Picture. That'll come out in the next day or two. If you want to see any of my first four movies that I did for why they should win Best Picture, check them out on the channel. But until then, peace.